So far in class, we have been learning about microevolution and how when a population is evolving, what's happening is these frequencies and the alleles are changing over time. So just to go over and review a couple things here, um, can an organism evolve? Just one fox, for example, can that fox evolve? No. Populations evolve. So you can look at an entire group of foxes and over time their frequency of alleles can change over time. But just one organism cannot experience evolution. How do you know if a population is evolving? Again, you would have to be able to determine that the allele frequencies are changing over time. And that is something that you can calculate and that's something that we're going to do today. Um, before we get into the calculations, let's make sure we know what these vocab words are. So gene pool, again, that's all of the alleles in a population. So looking at all the recessive and dominant alleles all together. Allele frequency would be the percent of a specific allele in the gene pool. So how many of the alleles are dominant? How many are recessive? A genotype frequency would be the percent of a specific genotype in a population. So how many are heterozygous? How many are homozygous recessive? How many are homozygous dominant? Equilibrium is when a population is not experiencing evolution. So they're staying consistent over time. So this is the opposite of evolution. For these examples though, what we're going to do is calculate how the alleles are changing over time to show that they're evolving. So in order to do that, we need to first figure out how many organisms are in the population. So for these warthogs, there are seven total organisms. How many total alleles do they have for this trait? Um, they're diploid organisms, so it looks like they have two alleles for this trait. There's two Bs um, in the diagram for each of the warthogs. So seven warthogs, they each have two, so seven times two would be 14. How many dominant alleles are there? So when we look at the image, um, we would just be counting up all of the big Bs, which are now highlighted in green, and there are seven. How many recessive alleles are there? They're now highlighted in purple. There's also seven of those. Now we can calculate the frequency of the dominant allele. So if there's seven dominant alleles out of the total number of alleles, which we said would, would be 14, we can divide those numbers and we get 0.5. So a frequency of 0.5 means it's a percent of 50. So 50% 50 of the alleles are dominant in the gene pool for this trait for this population of warthogs. Okay, let's do one more example. So same population, we have seven warthogs, um, but now we're going to calculate a genotype frequency. So it asks how many of these warthogs are heterozygous. Heterozygous means big B, little b for this example, and I see there's three of them in the image. What's the genotype frequency of the heterozygous hogs? We would take the three heterozygous hogs divided by the total number of them, which was seven, divide that out, and we get 0.43. So that means 43% of the warthogs have the heterozygous genotype. So this is calculating a genotype frequency. The previous slide was an allele frequency question. Okay, so now some of these, now the, the questions that we're about to do are on your worksheet. So you can fill these in as we, we move through them. Um, so in a given gene pool, there are 510 total alleles. 304 are dominant alleles. 206 are recessive alleles. What are the allele frequencies? So for the dominant allele, it says there's 304. Um, to get this frequency, frequency, we have to divide by the total of the alleles which is 510. Okay, you can plug that into a calculator or type that into Desmos or however you wanna do this math in your head maybe, um, and we get 0.6. So 60% of these alleles are dominant. Recessive alleles now, it tells us that 206 of them are recessive. We divide that by the total and we get 0.4. 40% of the alleles are recessive. 
Okay. Um, please notice how, yes, the total, um, when we add up the recessive alleles and the dominant, it should equal one, which is 100%, which makes sense because that's going to account for all of the genes and the gene pool for this trait. So that's a way you can check your math. Next question, in a population of 1,000 zebras, there are 160 recessive alleles and 1,840 dominant alleles. What is the allele frequency of the dominant allele and the recessive allele? So how many total alleles are there? So if we have 1,000 zebras and they're diploid, which means they have two alleles for this trait, then that's going to mean there's 2,000 total alleles. We need that number to use for the next um, section for this question. So for the dominant allele, it tells me there's 1,840. To get the frequency, I have to divide by the total number of the alleles, 2,000, and I get 0.92. The recessive allele now, it tells me there's 160 alleles. Divide that by the total and I get 0 0.08. And if you wanna check your math, you can add up that 0 0.8 and that 0 0.92. Does it equal one? Yes, it does. So my math checks out here. All right, next one, a farmer has a crop of corn. This corn makes a population. He has 500 stalks of corn, 130 are homozygous dominant, 140 are heterozygous, and 230 are homozygous recessive. What is the frequency of each genotype? All right, so for homozygous dominant, there's 130. I'm going to divide it by the total number, which is 500, and that's going to give me 0.26%, or sorry, it's 0.26, which is 26%. Heterozygous corn stocks, there's 140, divided by the total, which was 500, and I get 0.28, which is 28%. And then homozygous recessive, which are the two little a's, there's 230, Divide it by 500, and that is going to give me 0.46, which is 46%. And you could add those numbers up, and that should also give you 1 or 100%. Um, so you could do that to check your math. Okay, just to kind of reiterate this point here, um, a reason why we're doing this. Um, so we calculate allele frequency to see if changes are occurring. If the frequencies of the alleles are different, then microevolution has occurred. So if we start off with 70% um, A alleles and 30% B alleles, and over time we notice a shift in the numbers, so now it's 60 compared to 40, um, or 60 and 40 for these two alleles, um, then that means microevolution has occurred. So either genetic drift, gene flow, natural selection, sexual selection, or mutations had to have occurred. Something had to have impacted this population in order to cause this change in the frequency of alleles. And when that happens, that means microevolution has occurred.